Okay. Now today we'll talk about the uh, units of measurements, uh, use of oils and fats, as well as waxes in, in uh, Mesopotamia. Now, one of the uh, uh, important uh, measurement was, uh, of course, the uh, weight, because in chemistry you will use weight on medicine uh, all the time. And uh, shekel was the main uh, unit of, of uh, uh, weight or mass. Actually, I forgot to bring you the uh, test tube, uh, which contained 180 barley. It, it, it, about 180 grams of, uh, sorry, 180 barleys. I don't know why, probably three times 60 because their number is based on 60. So they, they, they said that the, the standard is 180 barley grains, arpa tanesi. As I mentioned before, barley or arpa was uh, the main uh, ingredient of their breakfast uh, lunch and dinner, because they always uh, made bread and some food with uh, barley uh, flour. So barley was very important material. So uh, the mass is about 8.4 grams today. So uh, 60 shekel is one mina, because as I said, their, num their number system is based on 60, not 110, 100. That's about 504 grams. Uh, in Sumerian, they call it mana. Mina is, is known, in, even during Ottoman Empire, they used to call a, a, a unit of mass mana during Ottoman Empire. All in Mesopotamia and Anatolia, mana was a used let. Of course, it was not the same mass, but uh, the word mana was used. One talent is, again, 60 times uh, mina. That's about 300, 600 shekels. Uh, it weighs about 30 uh, kilograms. And in Sumerian, they used to call it gun, gun, or the or, sorry. One grain is, of course, one over 180. That's about 47 grams. But when you look at the literature, you can see that the mass of one grain of uh, barley varies. And also the definition of grain. Have, has anyone of you been in England? Var mı İngiltere'de gidip gelmiş olan? So when you look at some of the web pages in, in England, they mention grain, mass grain, especially in old chemical formulas, they mention grain. So grain was also used, the word grain was also used uh, commonly, but the definition of one grain in, in, in England or in some European countries or Australia, it's different than exact, the, the mass of barley varies. So it depends on in which country you live, the, the mass varies. But the, uh, uh, the British grain is, it comes from the basic idea, but it's, it's, it's a different mass. Uh, when we look at the written uh, documents, first time we see the, the, the word shekel in Urnam code, Urnam laws. Uh, as I mentioned before, Urnamu laws were uh, written earlier than Hammurabi laws, around 2100 and 2050 BC. The uh, Urnamu laws, original clay tablet, it's, it's in Istanbul Archaeology Museum. Now, this is the uh, Photograph of Urna Molo in, in, in Istanbul Museum. Actually, we are very lucky uh, that many of the uh, Sumerian or, or uh, Hittite uh, runes or, or, or uh, materials left uh, from them uh, are in, in Turkish museums, especially since, as I mentioned before, Iraq was part of Ottoman Empire. So towards the end of Ottoman Empire, just before, maybe 100 before the Republic in that area, many archaeologists from the world rushed into Mesopotamia because they were trying to find uh, something important about archaeology because uh, in the very beginning, many, many years ago, they didn't know anything about Sumerians or Hittites. As I mentioned, Hittites were, uh, the existence of Hittites were discovered much later than Sumerians. 
And the reason, as I said before, maybe uh, the Egyptian, uh, ancient Egyptians during time of Horas was well known all over the world because the pyramids were there. But for Sumerians and especially for Hittites, everything was buried under the ground. So there were some uh, carvings on rocks which helped the archaeologists to understand that some civilization lived in Mesopotamia and there were some writings on it. Even in Anatolia, in Jizre, there, there is a carving of, of, of uh, kings of Mesopotamia and there are writings on it. And then they solved the Sumerian language. So Sumerians became very popular all over the world. So the, as I said, they all rushed here also to Syria. Many archaeologists from the world, especially England, uh, they excavated and then uh, they discovered all of these materials and well, of some people in Ottoman Empire were smart enough not to let them to, to steal all the products, take them to their museum. So they collected uh, the, uh, the Sumerian artifacts into Istanbul Museum and later, much, much later, Hittites were invented. They didn't know because in, in Tevrat, in, in uh, Bible of uh, Jews, the name Hittites is mentioned. Hatti. Hatti people were the people who occupied Anatolia just before the Hittites came, but they couldn't find any artifact because the Hittites wrote everything on clay tablets and they were buried. And some of them were not even baked. Therefore, they were all buried under the ground and they didn't have many monuments. Where there are very few monuments, stone monuments of Hittites. Therefore, it took a long time, but Sumerians uh, were almost uh, well known for many years. Many years ago, they, they, they excavated lots of things about Sumerians. So this is the picture of a replica of, of, of uh, Sumerian mana uh, or mina and, and the fractions as well as a shekel. Now, volume uh, units is one sila, which is equal to almost to our uh, one liter. One sila. So 10 sila is called one ban, 60 ban is one bariga. When we look at the uh, length unit, qubit, qubit is also well known around the world. Does anyone know anything what qubit is, how long it is, the length of qubit? Yeah. It is the distance between the middle finger and, and your knee. It's, it's, it's, uh, Okay, so this is the definition of qubit. Again, qubit varies uh, in different countries. The length varies, sometimes 49 centimeters, sometimes 52, but here I mention as, as, as uh, uh, 52 uh, centimeters between uh, middle finger and the elbow. So they called one qubit kus or kush, Two qubits, 104 centimeter gri, six qubits gi, 12 qubits nindan, 120 qubits, that's about 42.4 meters, that's called esse, and finger, again, in, in English, British uh, measurements, you can also hear finger, but the, the distance varies. It's one over 30 qubit, that's about 1.73 centimeters and they call it susi. Now we are lucky to have uh, the standard measure of, of, of uh, uh, qubit in again Istanbul Archaeology Museum. It's made out of a copper alloy. It, it dates back to 2600 B BC. Now water clocks uh, measure the time. The time measurement was water clock. Uh, do you remember the story of uh, using a bucket with a small hole and another bucket underneath to measure the, the, the time? Do you remember any scientists who carried out an experiment like a bucket at the top, kova, with a small hole 
and then they, he collected the, um, the, the drops in a container and he made an important discovery. I mean, he was, of course, going to make it, but he, that's how he measured the time. Do you remember anything about that scientist? In a similar way, rotation of the Earth may be yeah. observed, but I don't know. But rotation of the Earth, uh, it, it's not so easy. How are you going to me measure it? They measured the rotation of the uh, Earth, but it was not that experiment. Derste bir hoca söylemiştir ama hiç kimse hatırlamıyor galiba. Okay, why don't you uh, try to find it? It's an, he's an important, very important scientist, Italian scientist. He changed the world. The, he changed the history of science. Such an important person. Who was the man, Italian, who changed the uh, opinion of everybody in the world? Italian. Hmm? No, no, before that. Galileo. Galileo. Galilei, Galileo. What was the important discovery that he made? Do you remember? That it changed everything because everybody believed that Earth was the center of the universe. Uh -huh. Round being in the sphere that was known by Aristotle, but he, he made another important discovery that Earth was not the center of universe. Yeah, yeah. He he he. This, how did he do it? Do you remember how how he he had a, an instrument, and then with that instrument he that the sky, and then he found out that what. Hatırlarsanız bir şeyleri. Teleskopla ne gördü? No, it, it, he didn't compare any distances, but it was another very simple observation, huh? Yeah. He he discovered that uh, there were some uh, moons or or satellites around Jupiter, according to Aristotle. We were the center of the universe, and uh, there was nothing around Jupiter or something. So people knew that there were some um, uh, planets. But uh, he said that we are not the center because there are some uh, satellites rotating around Jupiter. They are not, it's not, they are not rotating around us, see, because he said, sun, all the planets, and all the stars are rotating around Earth. So that was wrong. And of course, the church got very angry, and uh, he was jailed or something. You remember his story. But, but at the same time, he, he also uh, discovered something else with, with that bucket experiment. Okay, look it up and find out. So you have to understand Galileo because that's how we uh, started to carry out scientific experiments because for almost 1800 or 2000 years people believed in the words of Aristotle. This was the first time a scientist carried out an experiment and made a very important observation that changed the beliefs of the entire world. So he wrote a book, he wrote a scientific book. That was the first time that a book was written based on experiments, based on experiments. So there was another person who wrote a book based on experiments. That was around again 1603, the doctor of Elizabeth I in England. He wrote the first scientific book based on experiment, which is which was about electricity, okay? The first time any book based on experiment was Galileo's, but in engineering or in, in, in physics, the first book was written around 1603 by the doctor of uh, 
Queen Elizabeth I. So maybe you can check it out who he was and what, what else he discovered, and also read something about Galileo. Okay. So, water clock uh, was not, of course, invented by Galileo because many people thought that Galileo was the inventor of water clock. But, no, of course, it was invented by Babylonians around 1600 BC, many, many thousands of years later. Now, they, of course, Babylonians were well uh, known for their mathematics. They knew mathematics much more than you can expect, and also physics laws, and also astronomy. They knew all the planets. They observed all the planets and their motions. Now, they knew that the day time is longer than night. The length of day is uh, longer than night in summertime and vice versa in, in wintertime. So they were using water clock or water clocks to measure the time of the day watches and night watches. Gündüz ve gece bekçilerinin mesai ücretini ödemek için su saatini kullanıyorlar. Ama gece ve gündüzün saat farkı olduğunu, gecelerin daha uzun olduğunu kuşun yazında gündüzlerin daha uzun olduğunu bildikleri için bir de şey yapıyorlar, düzeltme yapıyor, düzenleme yapıyorlar. So they know the difference between the, uh, the the length of day and night. So they they change the amount of water at the top. Now they had a ceramic container at the top. It had a small hole, and then they had another one, an empty one in the bottom. So it dripped into the the the, the one in the bottom. So in the morning when they came, when the water is finished and the other one is filled, then they paid full salary to the watchman. Of if, if it was maybe not empty totally, then they paid him less. So to be uh, honest, they paid more to night, night watches, watches more in, in winter time, and they paid more money to the day watchers in summertime. So they... We have a big container, let's say you have 10 liters. Daytime, you can use it in summer, but when you approach towards winter, then you remove some water from the top because day is, is shorter in, in summertime. So in winter time, sorry. This is a replica of, of uh, a uh, water clock. Of course, it flows very fast, but usually they made it drop by drop. Of course, later on, many accurate water clocks were made. I, we'll talk about it. So these water clocks were not so accurate because as the level of water goes down, the pressure decreases. Therefore, you have smaller amount of water. But they didn't care because they wanted the entire thing to get empty. But if you want to measure the time, then you have to make sure that the pressure in the top container is always the same. So later on, around 1600 AD or 1500 AD, uh, the, the scientists made very smart attachments and the water clocks became almost as accurate as our normal mechanical clock. They were uh, making sure that the pressure did not change. So think about how do you think that you can make sure that the pressure stays same in the upper container? You have to find something automatic so that water, level of water in the top stays constant. That's how you can have the pressure. So you have to find a way to fill it, but you should not be there. You have to have automatic filling. Can anybody suggest something? Anlatabildim değil mi hikaye? Yukarıdaki azaldıkça basınç düşecek. Yukarıdakinin yüksekliğini sabit tutmam lazım ki her damla eşit olsun. Ama 
Yukarıyı su doldurmam lazım. E başına bir bekçi koyarsam zaten gerek yok ki. Adam sabaha kadar bekler. Su saatine gerek yok. Çok hassas olmasını istiyoruz. O zaman çünkü üzerine çizgi koyup 3 saat geçti, 2,5 saat geçti dememiz lazım. Dolayısıyla yukarıya hassas bir şekilde sürekli su girmesi lazım. Ama taşmaması lazım. Seviyeyi aşmaması lazım. Altta kalmaması lazım. İkinciden bir boru çıkar. Nasıl çıkar? Niye yukarı çıksın ki? Alttan yukarı çıkmaz ki. Fizik kuralına aykırı. Ben biraz daha su koyacağım. Nerede? Sen olacak. başında durursan olmaz ki. Yok yok. Şimdi bir tane burada olacak. Tamam. Burada Hepsi olacak. dolu. Su yukarı çıkmaz ki. Tamam. Buradan çıkan boru da burada Ama olacak. O da dolu olacak için. Fark etmez ki. Su niye yukarı hareket etsin? Buradan buraya damlayacak. Buradan aşağı gidecek. Anladım da aşağıdaki yukarı çıkamaz ki su. Senin pompa koyman dolu, lazım. Dolu. dolu olması hiçbir şey ifade etmez ki. Taşırır yani. Taşırdıkça da ne kadar yukarıdasan basınç o kadar yük. Aşağıdakinin bir basıncı yok ki yukarı çıkacak kadar. Pompa koyarsan olur. O zaman pompa keşfedilmemiştir. Yok başka şey. Sifon, sifon düşünün. Sifon. Duydunuz mu sifon? Pardon. Yes. Cevap sifon mu? Sifon ama nasıl sifon? Sen başka bir şey söyle. Evet, apayrı bir şey düşünün. Söyle söyle. Hayır şey değil ki. Belki de senin pirlik fikrin parlaktır. Düşünmemişizdir. Asıl tepedeki su kaynağının sürekli sabit tutmak istiyorum. Olmasını istiyorum değil mi? Ama başında durmayacağım. Başında da durmayacağım. Ben Heh. bunu su kenarına yaparım. Arasında bir yol yaparım. Tamam Orada güzel. Su kenarındaki su buna sürekli gelir. Azaldıkça gelir. Aynı izada oldukça da gelmez. Çünkü Çünkü üstten taşar. Var. Bu evet. bir yol. Yani böyle bir şey düşündüm ama. Evet yok yanlış bir yol değil. Su kaynağının net olması lazım. Tabii su yani bir bir yerden su kaynağının yavaş yavaş öyle dolması lazım ki su bardak her han dışarıya taşırabilsin ama aynı zamanda alttan da verebilsin. O, o olabilir ama onlar hep de sifon. Yukarıya bir şey koyuyorsun sifon. Damla düştüğü anda şar diye su akıyor. Sifonu hatırlıyor musunuz şöyle bir şey? Extraction apparatus'taki mantığı düşünün. Okay. Well, let's Okay. So As I mentioned, they, they adjusted the time during equinox, and uh, they, they knew that day and uh, night were uh, equal. But uh, in in summertime, it was uh, the day uh, time sunshine was uh, uh, on the sky. That the sun was on the sky for a longer time. So they added one over six mina water every 15 days, since the uh, the day would get longer and longer. So they adjusted it every 15 days. They added a little bit more water. And then just in the opposite, they uh, removed uh, three mina of water from uh, uh, the water container above at equinox. Equinox or equinox da diyoruz Türkçe değil mi? Gece gündüzün eşit oldu, equinox. So now uh, I'm sure that you heard the name of El Jazari. He is a uh, very famous uh, scientist. Uh, he lived there around 1136 and 206. He designed uh, many water clocks, and he wrote a book. In the book, he, pre he presented the uh, the diagrams of the, uh, the of the uh, water clocks. But of course, he also designed some other mechanical machines. Some other machines. And he, he, his book was named Ingenious Mechanical Devices. Anybody heard El Jazari before? El Jazari? El Jazari. Ciddi hiç duymadık mı? Ne duydun El Jazari hakkında? Peki. Okay, <coughs> this is a page uh, from one of his books. Uh, this is a water clock. Uh, he wrote the book around just before, he, he, his book was published just before he died. He died in 1206. This is one page. And this is the diagram of, the, for, exactly from his, his, his, his book. Uh, this clock is called elephant clock. Because the, you can see the, the, the elephant in, the, in here. And you can see that there are some mechanical devices. And it's not only the water dropping, but also you can hear some music, some gongs. Uh, 
so he, he combined mechanical mechanics with water. Of course, he, he, in order to run a mechanical clock, you need an energy. So he was using water energy, but he really developed very well, very nice uh, mechanical clocks. This is uh, a very important uh, clock, which is called castle clock. Now, here you have some windows, doors, sorry, 12 doors, and 12 doors you have here. These are some balls, they fall down. And these are the musicians, they play music. Depend, you hear a gong at every hour, there is a horseman coming out. And these men were blowing their horn or playing a, a, a string instrument. But of course, we don't know whether he, he actually manufactured them because we didn't find any uh, water clock or mechanical clock of El Jazari anywhere in the world. But their replicas are made and they work. But he had great imagination. So I don't know if, if it will work now, but last night there was no internet because of because of the um, unfortunate bombing in Istanbul. Okay. Dün gece bir türlü çalıştıramadım. Sudeposunun içindeki suyun alçalması. 
kısa sonucu iki ayrı teknik kullanıldığı düzenekler çalışır. İlk düzenek orkestra mekanizmasıdır. Depodan akıp serbest kalan su biriktiği tabladan düştüğünde çarkları çevirerek vurmalı seslere neden olur. Aynı su sifon sistemine akarak tepesi sesinin çıkmasını sağlar. Ve böylece orkestra düzeneğini zenginleştirir. Su deposunun ikinci işlemi ise alçalan su seviyesiyle hareket eden bir şamandıranın her saat başı yapılacak tekrarlı işlemleri tetiklemesidir. Alçalan suyla güneş zamanını ölçmek isteyen LCSV'yi iki büyük problemin üstesinden gelmek zorundadır. Birinci problem, depodan akıtılan suyun gün boyunca debisinin sabit olması gerekir. Oysa normal bir sistemde suyun seviyesi düştükçe debi de azalır. Ve bu nedenle sistemin zamanı ölçme aralıkları homojen olmaz. Geçeseli bu problemi aşmak için ikinci bir silindir kullanmış ve bu silindirdeki su seviyesini tıkaçlı bir şamandıra ile sabit tutmuştur. Su azaldıkça şamandıra aşağı inerek tıkaç açmaktadır. Bu sayede büyük depodan gelen suyla seviye yükseltti, tıkaçı tekrar kapamaktadır. Bu düzenek tarihteki ilk geri beslemeli sistem örneğidir. İkinci kabında tıkaçlı şamandıra ile sabit tutulan seviyesiyle ana depodan eksilen suyun debisi de sabit tutulmuş ve böylece zaman gün içinde eşit aralıklarla ölçülebilmiştir. İkinci problem, Ecezeli'nin bu saati güneş zamanını ölçmektedir. Yani 12 saatlik toplam süre içinde bulunduğu bir dilimine göre her gün değişmektedir. Dolayısıyla sistem su akışı hızını her günün uzunluğuna göre ayarlayabilmektedir. Ecezeli bu sorunu da daha iyice bir yöntemle çözerek tarihin ilk mekanik güneş saatini yapmıştır. Suyun ateş hızını günün ve gecenin uzunluğuna göre boşalma deliğinin yüksekliğini değiştirerek ayarladı. Bunun için destur adını verdiği mekanik bir regülatör kullanır. Yılın tüm günlerinin seçilebildiği dairesel bir kadran arayüzü vardır. Bu iki güneş saatine denk gelen deponun tam boşalma süresi seçilen güne göre bu arayüzler ayarlanabilir. Bu sistem adeta suyla çalışan bir bilgisayar niteliğindedir. Su deposundan suyun boşalması ile birlikte şamandıra sabit hızla aşağı iner. Şamandıranın aşağı çektiği ip ise ikinci bir mekanizmayı harekete geçirir. Böylece 12 saati gösteren küçük daireler sırayla aydınlanır veya karın. Önce bir de iki sıra halinde bulunan 24 pencere her saat sonu açılır. Saat başlarında kürelerin şahinlerin yakalarından, oradan da vazolara düşmeleri sağlanır. Bu mekanizma ayrıca depodan akan suyun orkestrayı çalıştırmak üzere birikim tavalarına dağılımını sağlanır. Bu tavalardaki konik su manalarının önceden belirlenmiş zamanlarda açılması sayesinde orkestra elemanları çalışmaya başlıyor. Bir başka mekanizma ise en üstteki astronomik kadranın çalışmasını sağlamaktır. Ay, güneş ve burç dahil o çünkü gökyüzünün adeta bir fotoğrafını vermektedir. Astronomi kadrını bir kasnak tarafından çekilir. Kasnağa bir ip bağlıdır ve ipin ucunda da bir tespit ipi yoktur. Kadranın doğru sonuç vermesi için ipin kasnaktaki delikler üzerinde her gün bir derece kaydırılması gerekmektedir. Astronomi kadran, elçezeliğinin sadece mühendislik değil, kök ilme alanında da bilgi sahibi olduğunu gösterir. Elçezeliğinin 800 yıl önce geliştirdiği bu astronomik saat, aynı zamanda tarihi ilk ve tek mekanik güneş saatidir. Gökyüzüne ve dünyanın astronomik doğasıyla tam uyumlu bu saat ve saatin işlemesini mümkün kılan muazzam çözümler, ecezeliğinin çarpıcı dehasını tüm ilişkiler. <gülüyor> As I mentioned uh, before, there is no uh, evidence that he made these instruments. 99% uh, we believe that they were all in his imagination. So we don't know if he solved some of these problems exactly. So they, th they look at, they read the book, they try to understand the mechanism, and then they reach to a conclusion, but we don't know whether everything uh, said in the video is correct, because we do not have any evidence that he made the machines. But we know that uh, water clocks were made uh, and they were even uh, sold or sent to uh, other countries. 
But for, for these me mechanical, uh, material, material devices, we have no evidence that he made them work. We have the book, but we don't know whether he produced them or not. Okay, maybe I should mention this and then I'll stop. Now, you know Abbasids, I mentioned Abbasid and Umayyad, Umayyad, Emeviler, Abbasid, Abbasiler. Uh, they took over the right to be Khalifa in, in 750 AD, and Harun al-Rashid, one of the most famous uh, Abbasid Khalifa, uh, he became Khalifa in uh, 786, and he gathered all the sciences around to his palace. And uh, Jabir ibn Hayyam, as we mentioned before, uh, was in his palace. And we know that he is known to be the uh, father of chemistry. We have the boost in front of the chemistry department. And he uh, established a uh, school, which is called School of Translation. And in, in, in Arabic, it's called Baytul Hikmah, meaning School of Wisdom. So they translated the science, they collected scientists and some translators. And usually the translators were Jewish people and also Assyrian people. Asur, şey, Süryaniler, yani biraz karışıyor. A A Asirin, Asurlu, Suriyeli, Süryani. Süryaniler Hristiyan olanlar. But there is no exact definition of the, uh, the, the, the Süryanis. It's a name given to them. They are not very happy. There are many Süryan people in, in Turkey. But don't get confused. Süryanis are different than Assyrians and Syrians. Well, anyway. So they were the translators. <coughs> Suriyani people were the translators. And they translated books from Greek, Indian, and, and also of Chinese. They mathematicians, doctors, philosophers, chemistry, whatever they found, they translated. That's how, during the Caliphate times, the, the scientists became famous and they wrote many books after they, they learned what happened before them. They read all the books and their knowledge uh, was uh, enough to write new books because they created new, if you don't know anything about the subject, you cannot invent anything. So you have to know what's known, then you will say, why they didn't they invite this? Maybe I can do something and then I can create something new. So you, you, without knowledge, you cannot be an inventor or a, or a scientist. You have to have knowledge first. So Harun Rashid sent uh, a water clock to Roman Emperor Sharman. Charman, and uh, it, it was a very famous clock. Uh, you can watch the animation uh, in this address. I will stop here.